Hello everyone, this is Tom in Los Angeles. I have been a little bit absent recently for uh, just being busy with a ton of things uh, happening on my, in my personal life and uh, everything is going well. I'm recording this uh, on uh, July 14th, 2021, when in Los Angeles is extremely hot, as you can imagine. And I am uh, shamefully late in following up on a couple of tags that uh, I was very kindly uh, tagged on both by Steve Donoghue and by Jordan Parsons. So I'm going to do them both. And they're both, not surprisingly, tags that are coming from um, our tag producers, tag generator, Jim Books, Reading and Stuff. The A tag and the D tag, respectively. Start with the A tag. I'm going to link both Steve and uh, Jordan's videos below. The A tag says, A is for America. What do you consider the great American novel? This is a little bit of a difficult question for me, uh, mainly because I haven't, um, I don't feel like I have read enough American classics to be able to answer this question properly. Um, and also, I guess it's difficult for me to pinpoint or to answer the question, what is the crucial spirit uh, when, what is the novel that encapsulates the spirit of America? That is not too easy for me to say. I'm going to say uh, The Grape of Ra Grapes of Wrath because it's one of the novels I've read, uh, the classics, and uh, I loved it. Uh, I think I loved everything by John Steinbeck. Um, he had uh, a way to write from the guts that um, is very lyrical, very poetic, that really resonates with me and uh, I love that book so I'll, that's my answer for, for this question. A is for arc. Which character in literature has the most interesting character arc? Um, I'm going to go to Gene Wolfe here. Let's move from uh, John Steinbeck to Gene Wolfe. The character with the most interesting um, arc or personality arc that I know I can think of is Severian the protagonist of uh, The Book of the New Sun, which is a quadrilogy of four fantasy and science fiction books, uh, one better than the other. They are a treasure, a real gem of uh, imagination, intelligence, and uh, clever, cleverly structured um, writing. And uh, the protagonist goes from... Uh, the first book is titled The Shadow of a Torturer. He's an apprentice torturer as uh, the, his title says, a pretty, he does pretty horrible things at the very beginning and then develops and develops uh, gradually and constantly during the story um, through what is really a very fascinating character arc. I recommend this uh, quadrilogy and the novel to anybody. A is for Abby. Uh, Steve's translation for this uh, question is show your pets and even cats. I'm going to show a picture of my two dogs here. And their names are uh, Olive and Gizmo. Olive is the French Bulldog and Gizmo is the Pomeranian. A is for Australia. What was the last book you read by an Australian author? Mm. Oh, um, the last book I read by an Australian author was uh, Fathoms by Rebecca Giggs. It's a non-fiction book about uh, whales that came out only last year, I believe, or a couple of years ago. And uh, Brita had a good review on, uh, on her channel and um, I loved it. It's uh, a book that uh, is, is fascinating for its, uh, um, for its really three, uh, 360 degrees view on uh, the world of whales, especially today, compared to the history of, uh, of Wales uh, in, um, as seen from the human perspective, of course. Uh, a great book, and uh, she's a great reporter, Rebecca Geeks. A is for Austin. What do you plan to read for Jane Austen July? Oh, this is a bad one. We are on July 14th, and I'm reading a tag that is a little bit old. Um, um, let's, let's do this. I'm going to answer the question, what do you plan to read for Jane Austen, July 2022? Uh, it's going to be for me 
I have a lot of Jane Austen novels on my TBR that I still haven't gotten around to, to read and I really, really want to read. So um, I would say that um, I think even Sense and Sensibility I never um, really um, read. Uh, Pride and Prejudice, maybe half of it. So let's say Pride and Prejudice. I'm going to commit to reading it next year. A is for automobile. What is your favorite literary automobile? Mm, I don't have a great passion for cars. I'm, um, I'm like, I can answer this way. I, I can think of um, the extremely fun and exciting adventure books by Clive Custler, especially the first ones he wrote uh, himself. They were a lot, a lot of fun, very imaginative and full of energy. And uh, in every book, Clive Kastler would uh, uh, make his uh, protagonist drive a different uh, classic car, a beautiful car, describing it in the detail, because he himself is a collector of uh, old cars and classic cars. And in the, in the back or on the cover of his book, he would uh, have a picture of himself, the author, with one of his, his beautiful cars in a very um, light-hearted and cheerful way. He's got this type of Chestertonian face, Clive Custler, that you cannot hate. Um, he must have been a very um, fun person to be around at a dinner table or so with friends. In any case, that's, uh, that's what I'm thinking of when it comes to automobiles. A is for Anonymous. What is your favorite book or poem published anonymously? Um, I'm going to go with uh, Desiderata, the famous anonymous poem, um, for personal reasons as well. It's a lovely, lovely poem and, uh, and one of the classic anonymous ones. A is for autobiography. What was the last autobiography you read? The last autobiography I read, and I finished it only yesterday, the day before yesterday, is uh, La Vita Nuova by Dante, The New Life. Um, I've always known about this uh, autobiographical work, but I never actually read it all. And uh, he wrote it, Dante wrote it when he was uh, 28. And it's, um, it's crazy. It's just a crazy book because it's crazy to think that somebody will be able to write something like that at 28. Because it's, you can already see the spark of genius in how the new life is written in a polysemic way. Every paragraph has one meaning, but another one and another one as well, depending on where you're looking from. Um, so that gives me a headache in itself. But then there is this uh, immense literary mystery of Beatrice. Who was Beatrice? Did she, was she a real person? Was she a real woman? Some people said she didn't exist. Some people said she was a man. Some people said uh, it was all in Dante's head. I would say she probably was a girl, but I wouldn't dismiss any of the other options. Um, and uh, since the book is uh, quite brief, it's not really an autobiography in the modern sense uh, at all, because it's extremely abstract and uh, uh, in interior. It's uh, something that Dante describes in a medieval way, but also, I would say, in a Dante way, full of uh, references and riddles, that, of which I probably caught uh, one third. So I will have to go back to it. The new life. A is for audiobooks. Do you consider listening to an audiobook as reading? Yeah, absolutely, I do. It's a, it's a different experience. I've been uh, reading um, a lot of audiobooks in the last years, especially uh, walking my dogs, and uh, and that's been uh, a, a great experience. I'm saying it's different because uh, I'm very mm, sensitive to the type of voice of the narrator. And uh, I've had to stop listening to some audiobooks, even if the book itself was really great, because it was narrated by somebody whose voice or intonation didn't resonate with me or I didn't like. Uh, so it's a different experience. Uh, is it better or worse? I still prefer to have the paper book in my hands and read it. That's my traditional preference. But um, I've enjoyed very much a lot of audiobooks. I would say um, um, the only exception I would make is uh, for uh, particularly hard books, books where 
almost every paragraph you need to stop and reflect and try to understand and think a lot. Those don't really lend themselves very well to the audiobook format. Uh, it's more, uh, it, the more lighthearted the book is and the more I love it in the audiobook format. So that's, uh, that's my A tag, okay? I hope I'm being quick enough. Let's move quickly to the D tag. And thank you, Steve, very much for uh, tagging me with the A. I'm uh, going to um, move to the D where, for, what, for which I was tagged by Jordan. So thank you, Jordan. I'm going to get started now with this uh, list of Ds. D is for Dahl. What is your favorite book by Roald Dahl? Um, shameful Admission. And this is kind of maybe unsurprising because as an Italian, um, my childhood classics are completely different from the Anglophone world's childhood classics. So I never read the James and the Giant Peach. I never read the Charles and the Chocolate Factory. I saw bits and pieces of uh, the movie uh, productions, but nothing more. So my answer is, unfortunately, I haven't read anything by Dahl. This for Doctor Who. What is your favorite book about time travel? My favorite book about time travel is actually a book called uh, Replay by Ken Greenwood. Uh, I don't know if it's very well known. It's a science fiction book, of course, time travel. And uh, I'm going to read this brief blurb here. Jeff Winston was 43, uh, trapped in a tepid marriage and a dead-end job, waiting for the time he could be truly happy when he died. And when he woke and he was 18 again, with all his memories of the next 25 years intact, he realized he could live his life again, etc., etc. It's uh, The book was actually um, written, I believe, in the 80s. Let me briefly check here. Uh, either 70s or, or 80s. Um, 86. In 86. And uh, um, I don't know if uh, this came first or the movie with... Uh, the Groundhog's Day famous comedy movie came first, but the basic concept is very similar. A replay, a repeat of the same time period, only instead of a day, this is 25 years, and it keeps repeating. Uh, very well executed, uh, very fun, with no pretensions of uh, high literature, uh, but it's, it's a recommended book for, for anyone, really. Replay. Great, great novel. Um, D is for dark. What is the darkest book you have read? I think the darkest book I have read is American Pastoral by Philip Roth. I cannot think of, even if it's not a horror book, or uh, but I cannot think of uh, a darker, darker um, book than that. Psychologically dark, morally dark, visually dark, thinking about uh, his daughter, especially the protagonist's daughter, the way he finds her towards the uh, second part of the book. And uh, it's almost as if Philip Roth painted a um, huge canvas that, in his opinion, in some way wanted to represent the America of the last uh, 50 years, using only uh, angry brushes that are black, brown, deep purple, and with, with no light painting monsters, angry expressions, eyes, some abstraction. This is how I would see visually American Pastoral, uh, an astoundingly dark book. Um, uh, D is for Dickens. How many Dickens novels have you read? Not many, not as many as I would like. Um, uh, my next one on my TBR is actually Harsh Times. I'm looking forward to reading that one. Um, the Little Curiosity Shop. I believe that's the title, is one um, of the maybe four or five that I read, and uh, maybe one of, the, my fa of my favorites. The Little Curiosity, the Little Curiosity Shop, uh, from a delight and pleasure point of view, I really loved, and uh, the, A Tale of Two Cities, from, more from an intellectual standpoint, I, I liked those two, but I, I need to work my way through his body of work. This for dictionary. In these internet years, do you still use physical paper dictionaries? Uh, sometimes I do, and uh, as somebody who uh, is still uh, missing the meaning of many English terms, 
uh, and Italian terms. I've always, um, even when I was living in Italy and didn't know I would have ended up in different countries and continents, uh, I was picking up my Italian dictionary because it's a way to have your imagination stimulated in uh, very quick ways. And uh, uh, it's really, it really is an exercise for your memory, for your language, for the center of your language, and for your imagination, for your creativity. So it's something that should be done very often. D is for Dagger and Detective. What was the last detective novel you read? Um, probably one by Ian Rankin. I've really enjoyed uh, that series. It's a long series. And uh, I like the tone, the atmosphere that Ian Rankin is able to create and, and to build. I don't remember the title. I, I probably read five or six. D is for Dostoevsky. What is your favorite Dostoevsky novel? Ooh, um, I haven't read them all, but uh, I think it would be probably easier for me to say which one is my least favorite. The least favorite of all Dostoevsky's novels is The Gambler. The Gambler is um, quite fun, but it's so simple and, uh, and slim. And uh, um, I believe he wrote it uh, to pay off some gambling debt himself, because he was a gambler himself. And uh, he had such a tight time frame, he probably wrote it in something like a few weeks. And you can, you can, say, you can tell by uh, how quick the writing is and uh, uh, how fast everything moves forward. Of course, it's Dostoevsky. So what Dostoevsky writes uh, under the creditor pressure in a month is better than what most authors could write in five years, but still is, in my opinion, his worst that, I, that I've read. Uh, D is for diversity. Which book do you, from your reading, tick the most diversity boxes? Let's say Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. I cannot say why uh, this uh, book um, is uh, ticking a lot of diversity boxes. Um, because I would spoil the plot otherwise, but uh, it's a book I loved, I really, really loved. It came out only this year, or last year, very recent. Uh, it's brilliant, it's uh, peppered with uh, a lot of uh, plausible, scientific, uh, hard science uh, ideas on every, in every page, and uh, everyone should read it. It's a lot of fun, it's a really a lot of fun. A D is for drawing. Who is your favorite visual artist? I don't have a favorite visual artist, although probably Van Gogh comes close, but in my life and experience, because I'm very visual and I love, love, love visual arts, uh, it keeps changing. I always have a new favorite one. In this per particular period of time, because I'm following a particular project uh, as a hobby about uh, surrealism, my favorite uh, visual artist is Giorgio De Chirico. Italian surrealist who made his bones uh, in Paris with uh, Dali, with the gang of uh, historic surrealists, and then he moved back to Italy where he uh, drew this uh, beautifully colored colors that give me emotions just uh, looking at them. Um, surreal landscapes with uh, classical architectures and uh, um, surreal and abstract uh, human figures made of mannequins or puppets with a little bit of classicism but uh, deformed by his own artistic sensitivity. Uh, the Kiriko well, is great. I, I love uh, everything that is uh, drawn and sometimes I go back and uh, enjoy those uh, visuals. I'll try maybe to add a couple of uh, his paintings here as a coda to this video. I hope I didn't talk too much. Thank you very, very much for uh, listening to this uh, 2001 video. And thank you, Steve. Thanks so much, Jordan, for tagging me. And sorry again for being so late. I hope you are all doing very well. Bye.